Stop it. Get rid of that thing. Get rid of it. What's going on? I'm a celebrity around here. You're just nothing but a worthless, stupid chair that's good for nothing except putting your bottom on. This is the last... Oh, hello, children. It's nice Uncle Ricky. <laughs> hello. I know what you're thinking. Ooh, it's Rick. I hope he tells me a story that's got lots of porridge in it. Well, you're in luck. And here goes with the most porridgey story in history. Once upon a time, there was an enormous purple frog called Horace, with nine legs and the IQ of a nuclear physicist. It was Horace's ambition to be the first frog on the moon. And the second, and the third. In fact, he wanted to be all of the first 500 frogs on the moon. But unfortunately, a war fell on him and he died. The end. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> porridgey story really was it oh well, here's a good porridgey one many 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 years ago there was a poor but unusually good little girl who lived with her mother on the edge of a forest the mother was very poor and they never had much to eat and one day they ran out altogether there was nothing in the larder not a crust of bread not a grain of porridge nothing the mother didn't know what to do. She was a simple woman, not terribly bright, but she was also kind-hearted, and although she didn't mind going hungry herself, she couldn't bear to see her daughter going without. Well, never mind, mother, the little girl said. I can manage without breakfast, and lunch, and dinner, and breakfast again. <laughs> I'll just go for a walk in the woods. You never know. Maybe something will turn up. So, the little girl went off for a walk in the woods, and soon she found herself far away from the cottage where she lived. <laughs> she thought she knew the forest well, but this part of it was all strange and unworldly. The grass was silver, not green, and covered with a glittering carpet of dew. Silver cobwebs hung from the trees. Even the flowers and the animals looked as if they were made of silver. <laughs> and just as she was beginning to wonder if she wasn't completely lost, the little girl met an old woman with silver hair, carrying a small silver pot under one arm. <laughs> As if this wasn't strange enough. The old woman seemed to know who she was and what her problem was without even being told. Take this silver pot, my dear, the old woman said. It will help you out of your difficulties. Oh, but I, I have nothing to put in the pot, <laughs> the little girl said. Ah. You need nothing, the old woman replied. Just follow these simple instructions. All you do is say, cook, little pot, cook. And the pot will cook hot, sweet porridge. And when you want it to stop, you say, stop, little pot, stop. It's as simple as that. Cook, little pot, cook, and stop, little pot, stop. The girl repeated the words carefully. Yeah, that's right, baby, the old lady said. That's exactly it. And it really was that simple. The girl took the pot home, stood over it and said, <clears throat> Cook, little pot, cook. And at once, the pot began to make porridge, hot and smooth with, with thick brown sugar and cream. Oh, sometimes it, it seemed to taste of bananas and, and other times of coconut or toasted marshmallows with chocolate sauce. Mm. And when she and her mother had eaten enough, she said, Stop, little pot, stop. And the pot cooked no more. All went well. The mother and the child were never hungry. <laughs> In fact, both of them put on quite a lot of weight. Three times a day they ate porridge. Breakfast, lunch and tea. 
Mm, and it always tasted of so many wonderful things and was so delicious that they never grew tired of it. But things went suddenly wrong one day when the little girl was out visiting her grandmother with her best red cape on. The mother had just eaten a big bowl of porridge which had, which had tasted of raspberry milkshake, but she fancied a bit more. And for the very first time, she decided that she would be the one who would get the pot cooking. Right, <coughs> cook, little pot, cook, she said. And at once, the pot got cooking. <coughs> well, <coughs> the mother was delighted. I did that. <coughs> but just when she got a nice big bowl full, she realised that she'd forgotten the words to make it stop. Oh, um, cease, little pot, cease, she tried. And no more, little pot, uh, no more. Uh, that's enough, potty, enough. By now, the porridge was pouring over the edge of the pot and slopping about on the kitchen floor. Uh, thanks, little pot, yeah, thanks, <laughs> the mother tried. It was no good. More porridge bubbled over the edge of the pot and slurped down onto the floor. And that wasn't the end of it. Gradually at first, but then faster and faster, the porridge poured out. Soon, it was climbing up the walls, up the staircase, into the bedrooms. It was only a small cottage, and in what seemed like minutes, and probably was, both the bedrooms were absolutely jammed full of porridge, which was even messier than if they'd been porridged full of jam. Now it was pressing against the windows. The walls were bending and buckling. Something had to give. And with a great <laughs> explosion, the windows shot out of their frames and a great waterfall of porridge cascaded out and into the garden below. Help, little potter! No, little pot! Oh, stop it, you rotten potter! That's enough, you ruddy pot! But nothing worked. Grey, steaming porridge thundered down the garden path. One after the other, the flower beds bloop, bloop, disappeared. <laughs> and not just the flower beds. The very trees themselves, <laughs> they were torn down by the flood of porridge. Soon the garden was gone and the porridge had only just begun. It was the neighbour's turn next. He was an elderly man who kept himself to himself. He'd been sitting in a deck chair reading a newspaper <laughs> when he was disturbed by the mother's shouts. No, little pot! Oh, whoa, little pot! What? Uh, what's that? A pot? Hmm? The neighbour mumbled to himself, and a second later, <laughs> the porridge got him. <laughs> a great wave of it crashed down, sending him one way and his wig another. Then it made for his house. <laughs> the house didn't last long. Soon it had vanished beneath a churning sea of porridge. And now it was the turn of the village. It had been a quiet day. Nothing much had happened in the village. A couple of old men were sitting in the village square. Ah, I say, old chap. Ah, yes, old chap. What's that then? Oh, well, there would seem to be, um... Ah, it's just a tidal wave of porridge. What? A tidal wave of porridge? <gasps> and that was as far as they got. <laughs> the porridge roared in. And instead of the village eating porridge, the porridge ate the village. The town hall, the post office, Sainsbury's. And soon, the surrounding mountains themselves were sinking into a great, steaming, porridgey lake. By the time the girl got home, her mother was on the roof, panicking and eating wildly. Mother, what's going on? I've had to swim home. Yeah, well, never mind about that. Do something. I've been treading porridge for an hour. By now, the mother was close to hysterics. Do something! The little girl suddenly realised what had happened and quickly uttered the magic words that her poor mother had been unable to remember. Stop, little pot, stop! The pot, at last, stopped cooking. And that was the end of it. But for the next six months, six months, anyone who travelled anywhere had to eat their way across the countryside. And they had to be very fond of porridge. Yeah. I don't think you'll ever hear a story with much more porridge in it than that. <laughs>